Hey, everybody. Welcome to Campus to Contracts. I'm your host, Brendan, and I'm joined by Mason Williams, a professional sports agent. And we're about to dive into a day in the life. Mason is a successful lawyer, and he is opening up his agency in Las Vegas, Nevada, where he is helping out all sorts of professional sports athletes, whether that's in the NFL, the Canadian Football League, the USFL, uh, rodeo, you name it, he is helping sports athletes all throughout this young, their young careers, their young development. His management firm also helps young high school, junior high folks as they navigate into the space of college athletics. As we dive into a day of Mason, what is the best highlight of a day for you as an agent? Well, hey, what's going on? Uh, another episode, I'm glad to be here. But the best, I'd say the best text that I get are usually from general managers ready to offer some of my players, college guys, or free agents contracts to go play. I think that um, the most excitement that I get is from players, whether they've uh, already been in the league or have been in a, a spring league, the USFL or UFL um, teams, and they currently don't have jobs. So when you finally get that text from another general manager, whether it's from another UFL team or a CFL team or the NFL wants to take a look at them, you know, they get super excited and it feels like all my hard work of communication, time and um, diligence communicating with these general managers and assistant general managers has paid off. So usually that, that brightens up my day, just getting someone another contract and um, then being able to see their progress as they make it through camp or maybe they get signed on by a team right away and you get to see them in the next game. So a lot of things happen, and, uh, but that is definitely one of the most special moments for me as an agent. How many phones do you carry as an agent? I carry two phones, but but I carry like one of them is really for the agency and then another one is more personal. Some of the players have my personal number, but I do carry multiple phones. What was the latest text you'd ever received <laughs> doing this? <laughs> the latest text I have ever received. Um Usually it's a player. I've, I got a text from a player who is currently uh, hurt. And um, they uh, they were just asking uh, if the team that they've been trying to get onboarded with is still waiting for them to report. Uh, right now in the CFL, um, it's preseason. It's a preseason game coming up this week, actually. Um and a lot of changes are made, a lot of cuts, a lot of uh, transactions and decisions are made by these teams. So it's important for me to stay on uh, top of everyone's schedules. Well, how late was it? 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4.30? I've gotten, I'm, I get texts all throughout the day. The last 3 a.m. text I got was of a player telling me that he was hurting. Like he, he was, um, his body was aching. He was, he was getting really banged up during camp. Uh, my phones are never on silent unless like I'm somewhere where they need to be silenced, but they're never on silent. And, uh, you know, I get texts at 3 a.m. I get calls at 3 a.m., 2 a.m. I have players. I, I'm on uh, Pacific Standard Time. I have players that are on East Coast time and they call me. If they wake up at 6 a.m., it's 3 a.m. over here. So they call me at that time or vice versa. So, yeah, my phones are never so the. The life of an agent, do you see yourself getting to a four phone future? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I'm very organized and I keep the contacts very, very separated. Uh, I don't think I'll need another phone. I hope I don't. I know there's agents that have four phones, three phones. I know plenty of them. So, and then that's how they do it, but I just don't think that I'm going to need it. Maybe I will. I'm not sure, though. I just don't think so. I was just thinking that you have one phone for all the general managers. It's kind of like the bat phone. You know, it's really important. So every time it rings or it buzzes, you, you've got to pick that up right away. Um, and then you have one for all your athletes so you know who's going to give you the most headache. And then, obviously, you uh, have one phone line for the most needy. Something like that. I, I like that idea. That's good. <laughs> and then, obviously, as, as you start uh, adding some assistance to the program, I think that'll be... Uh, a nice way to navigate, delegate, and move things along. 
Would you say the uh, the hardest thing is uh, telling folks, telling your sports athletes uh, the bad news? Is that when that those hard conversations that you have to have probably on a regular basis, you're more experienced with that? Because in anybody's line of work, I would say it's easiest to avoid the hard conversation. Yeah, I, I get a lot more no's than I do yeses, for sure. Um, a lot of times, though, the players get the no's either just when I'm getting them or even sooner. So they'll know that they're cut and then they'll have to relay it to me so that I know or vice versa. Sometimes I can get a feeling if they're going to be let go or something like that. And but, but usually I'm already like, you know, seeing what kind of ways I can mitigate this situation. I don't want them out too long and I want to get them on another team. I try to have backup plans for all of my guys. Every case is individual and it's a case to case basis, but yeah, definitely telling them like, hey, like this team doesn't want you or you're not uh, gonna get signed at this time or anything like that, it sucks. But I tell them straight up and I don't try to like sugarcoat it and make it like a 20 minute phone call for something I could say in like five minutes. There's somebody right now, everybody. That's yeah. just how it works. <laughs> um, your, your, your biggest highlights, I would, I would probably say as somebody who's in this line of work, you have to get pretty excited for when your player, your athlete, I mean, let me try this again. You have to get pretty excited for when you, the professional athlete reaches a milestone or is able to achieve a level of success on the field that's going to generate to more opportunities. For yeah. you as an agent, is that is that a huge win for you too? Like, do you celebrate that like a family member doing well? Is, I mean, you're you're their biggest fan. Is that how this works? It definitely is. Like, for me personally, I'm very competitive. Like, I like to think that of all the agents that I compete with, I have the best players or some of the best players. Um, and my players are only getting better. And therefore, I'm getting better as well. You know, kind of like a little manager that oversees things. So I definitely am in competition, I feel like, just as much as they are. Like, I want them all to be starting, thriving, and being the best players on their team, no question. So that, you know, whenever I'm in a meeting or whenever I'm trying to talk to even that manager of that team, I'm like, hey, look, I got the best player on your team. Now look at this other guy who I got. You know, it kind of helps me with the rest of my players as well, the more successful my guys are. So I am definitely 100% competitive about it, even when uh, with my bull riders, when they get high scores, like anything 90 above is like a really good score. So, you know, whatever the sport is, I want to have the best player on the field, on the dirt, on the turf, on the court, whatever it is. I'm definitely competitive about that and I make it known. Are you, do you find yourself having these also personal relationships with your sports athletes? So where like you go have Thanksgiving with them, Christmas, you're sending presents, do they become family to you? Or you uh, just keep it all professional. No, no. Um, and, if you, and, and if you have a if you have a special player that's like he, that guy's Thanksgiving, you don't want to tell anybody else. I totally understand. No. <laughs> well, honestly, I I am the type of person who believes that business is personal, and I try to have personal relationships with all my players. But some of the players don't necessarily want that either. You know, so like some players are cool with you know me talking to them and. Uh, us having a relationship outside of whatever sport they're playing or whatever business transaction they have going on that I need to help them with. And then some players only want me to talk to them about what's going on on the business spectrum. So whatever it is, I'm cool with. I prefer to have a personal relationship with all of my guys and girls and whatever the case is. So, you know, I'll talk to their parents. Um, I know some of the uh, players' as spouses uh, some of their kids. So it, it, it definitely ranges. And some of them, I only talk to them when I have something to talk about when it comes to business. And that's just how our relationship is. But I'm very open to any type of relationship. So to finalize this as, you know, you had some of the biggest highs of the day. So I'm going to ask you, what is the oddest endorsement you've had for one of your professional athletes? One of the players. Indoor. What is what is the oddest requests? Oh, from like what the players wanted. No, okay. no, no. From a from a company. A company is I will pay your pl this player X amount of dollars to endorse this product, for instance. Okay. Or I, wear this yeah. product. I had a. Uh, okay. Well, it's weird to me, but it might not be weird to like 
the industry that they're in. I have a bull rider who uh, a tractor company called me one time asking if they could, you know, get some sort of representation uh, and some sort of collaboration with one of the bull riders. And I was like, wow, a tractor company is calling me. Now, for me personally, I've never, <laughs> I don't even know, like outside of John Deere, I don't know any tractor companies. So that one, that one was really cool. That was weird to me. Um, uh, I also, I have, a, I have a bull rider who always wears a watch when he rides. And to me, I'm like, dude, those are some expensive watches. Like, why are you wearing a watch when you ride a bull? But I guess that's just his swag, right? And so I've had a couple uh, conversations with some watch companies. But it's the bull riders. Their, their endorsements are the ones that kind of throw me off. For the football players, I, it really doesn't matter. Like, you know, you got the high smile. You got Fashion Nova. Like, bull riders don't get Fashion Nova. They don't, they don't get, you know, high smile. They get more, like, rigid stuff. I got a shoe deal from one of my bull riders from Mescalero Boots. Thank you to them. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's uh, the bull riders are definitely you know curveballs in my life. So you're used to certain endorsements, you're very accustomed to those, but then when you get the ones that are off, oddballs that are just not normal, it comes from the different industries. So as your career develops, as you continue to go down this path of building an agency, the more variety of professional athletes you get, the more variety of these endorsements and calls you're going to have, and you're going to wake up one day and be like, I didn't know this was a thing for this sport. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to hear that that those are opportunities. Now you just have to, if you can cross that into the NFL, like a tractor company really wants to uh, advertise for a defensive tackle, for instance, because he does such a good job of, you know, destroying offensive linemen. Now that's a creative idea for those out there that are interested in endorsing folks. Yeah, no Contact question. Contact Mason, he'll be, happy, he'll be happy to set that up for you. Yeah, I actually I do have a uh, I have a football player who is like a who's a cowboy from Dallas, Texas. He's a cowboy. He's playing over at uh, uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats right now. He's doing really well. So um, yeah, maybe I'll have to ask them if they want to look into some football players. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I, the endorsements are are always great, always. Well, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us for Campus to Contracts as. Uh, Hope you get to know a Mason as we go through these series of podcasts and some of the oddities, the highs, if you will, of being a sports agent and how hard that is. Only two phones, folks, for right now. <laughs> but stay tuned, and uh, he'll be telling us when he gets to add more. I'm your host, Brendan. That's Mason. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And thanks for, so much for joining us. Have a good one.